Hello guys, this is Eli G. Brown slash Eli G. Brony, and welcome to another classic LEGO Bionicle review. In this episode, we are starting off the 2005 set reviews, at least during this new series anyway. So of course, I did already look over some of the 2005 sets, such as uh, Rudaka and Gitongu. But now, I am starting off reviewing the rest of 2005. Excluding the play sets. I am not going to be looking over the play sets. The minifigure sets. Just the large action figure sets. Alright, so here we have the Toa of 2005, and they are the Toa Hordika. The half Toa, half Rocky hybrids. Story-wise, after the Toa Metru returned to Metru Nui to rescue the rest of the Matoran, they had discovered that their city was covered in webs. Because the Vizorak, spider-like Rahi, came into the city and built webs all around it. The Toa got captured by the Vizorak and were transformed into the half-Toa, half-Rahi beings known as the Toa Hordika. And this is the result of them. They were then rescued by the Rahaga, who we will look over in the next episode. And they needed to go on a quest to look for the legendary Kitongu in hopes of being able to change back into the Toa that they once were. However, in the meantime, they had to adjust to their new Hordika powers. Alright, with that said, now let's take a look at the actual set. Well, they are pretty much all the same Mostly, although they do have a few differences, so it's really, really just mostly the colors and the weapons. Anawa's got this, uh, thing for his weapon right there, not sure what that's supposed to be. Nokama has this sort of trident, well not really a trident, some sort of thinned piece for her weapon. Nuju continues on the tradition of having ice-based weapons, with all those spikes right there. Bakama has this flame sword piece, which is really nice. Well, he has two of them. They all have two weapons. Winua has these drills, which can even actually drill, because they do move in and out. Like proper drills. So. Yeah, pretty much, Winua has some extra value. He is the one Toa to have this additional feature with the weapon. Being able to dig. And how can I forget Matau? His weapons, his... Oh, his Rajuka Spinner is also coming up. His weapons are these knives. Very good for cutting through, well, I guess, webs, but also through the jungle. Even though Metro Nui didn't have any jungles, it was all a city. Alright, so we do get a number of new pieces, such as the new feet pieces, all in silver. And we have the new lower leg pieces, as well as the new arm piece. Now the arm pieces, well it's extraordinary how they all have different sorts of uh, arms. One two different types of arms. First there is this new arm piece, which has this gear on it, which has him move his weapon up and down. I think this is the last time in which we ever see the gears ever be used, since the Toa Nika would not have the gear functions in their releases. And then over on the uh, other side, the other arm is the same arm piece that was used for the Toa Mata. Mostly used for their leg pieces. I think that it's supposed to be their Toa half, while the arm over here is their Rocky half. That's my guess of it. So, as for new recolors, well, any any colors that this piece was not available in before is now available with the Toa Hordika series. Well, at least with, um... Was it released in white before Toa Hordika Nuju? I'm not really sure, but if it wasn't before, Toa Hordika Nuju introduces it, but I'm not sure if it's 
if it was introduced with Topher Dikanuju. But it's a new color for the others. New in the light brown, new in the dark blue, dark red, and dark green. And we also got the new silver kneecap pieces. And the main torso piece is also brand new. And the same goes for the main body right here. Although there isn't really much that can be done as far as the arms, the arm movability can uh, go. Like, this is pretty much the limit. Pretty much the new arm piece right here basically is designed to work only with the Toa Hortica. Because it's, it's pretty much built exactly that way. Now the thing here in the movie, I think I've mentioned this before, but in the movie, their weapon over here was replaced with a hand. Now I don't think that that sort of design was canon, it was just how it appeared in the movie. And I think that makes more sense in the set forms to have two weapon pieces. Since the movie had them each only have one, which didn't make much sense. Especially considering that in the movie, this was actually their left hand. This part right here was their left hand. It was not a weapon. So this was actually not a hand in the movie. It was just an elbow, I guess. Which is kind of odd. Kind of like they are just carrying a, a pseudo hand. Which is really their lower arm. That, that was just how it appeared for me. And their head pieces are also brand new. It's, it's a new style of the masks. And I will show you how they work if you don't know how they work already. So what you do is... Well, let me get this back on. There's the hole in each of these masks where this actual connection piece is supposed to go through it. Underneath the mask is this. We got a new lift arm piece with a ball joint sticking to the uh, the diagonal top, and then we connect two of the Borak eye pieces onto that Technic uh, lift arm piece. Then we put the mask on top of that, and then we put the axle through it. Now the Toradika have lost their ability to use mask powers. But what they gain is a new weapon on their back, the Ruduka Spinners, the Functions of the Year. Yeah, the Ruduka Spinners were the functions that we got for 2005. Now what you do is pull out this rib cord, and the Ruduka Spinner will spin. Sometimes it will fly off, though it's not at the moment, or at least it hasn't so far. So if you do it really hard, I'm going to try one more time. Okay. Alright. Yeah, but as I said, it will fly off. I couldn't get it to do it this time, but it does fly off if you manage to pull it, pull on it hard enough. Or maybe if you have a more circular uh, Roduka spinner piece. Uh, this one is kind of, kind of bent in some places, though I'm not going to demonstrate it with any of the other Tohortika. Now, I think that each of the Tohortika's faces are supposed to resemble different types of rocky or different types of animals. I think Anawa is supposed to resemble a camel. Nokama is supposed to be a whale. Wenua is a bat, I think. Bakama is a dragon. Matau is a crocodile. But I do not know what Nuju is supposed to be. Any ice-based creatures that look like that? I don't know. I can't really think of any. I, I don't think that it is a walrus because, well, he doesn't have the teeth. And I don't think it's a polar bear because polar bears do not have spikes on their heads. What kind of animal do you think it is? <laughs> because I am at a loss for what type of animal it could be. Okay, well, that is the Toa Hordika, the Toa set that came out in 2005. Certainly very unusual Toa set to have come out. I mean, just wow with these guys. Certainly very different from what LEGO had done before. Pretty much giving us some sort of werewolf type of deal, if you 
if you know what I mean. But not bad sets overall, I certainly did like them. Alright, so that is about it for the Toa Hordika. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again next time.